morning, all of you uh, lovely followers of Farmer Jack Jokes. This is Jack from Farmer Jack Jokes, standing here on the beach this morning, making a quick video of you guys. Like we started last week, uh, uh, starting to show, you know, the guys that's behind the software that do all of the jokes. Uh, today I want to have a little bit of a special video. I would like to show you today on our uh, video, I want to show you just what happened with technology in the last year. So for the guys that have been around having a look at our jokes, at Farmer Jack jokes, I would like to show you guys uh, what jokes were, look, were looking like that we made not even a year ago and our technology have changed and one of the jokes we have uh, done a remade of the joke and we are doing a lot of those because the technology have changed so much so as part of this joke I want to tell you guys first tell you guys what the joke is then I'm going to show you what the previous version of the joke looked like and then I'll show you what our latest release of that joke looks like now, please bear with me. I'm standing here in the sun. The sun is very bright in my eyes. I'm standing here on the beach because this joke is about a guy that comes to the beach. He comes to the beach for the day. He comes to have a swim. And the waves are so strong, the waves ripped his pants off. So, now he stands on this beach, packed with people, without having pants on in the water. Now, obviously, this is a big conundrum for the guy because how does he get out of the water without people seeing that this poor fella lost his pants? So the guy hang around in the waves for a couple of hours. His body starts looking like a prude, as you can imagine. And then, yes, as the day drags by and people start leaving the beach, eventually there's just one single lady sitting on the beach. And the guy decides, you know, he must make a run for it. He must get out of the beach. And as he's thinking about his escape plan to get out of the water, make it onto the beach, and make it to his towel, there's this bucket floating on the water. So the guy, lo and behold, grabs the bucket. He puts it in front of his, uh, uh, what's the right word of calling it? the piece which prevented him from getting out of the water in the first place and now he's very brave and he marched onto the beach holding this bucket in front of his dignity shall we just say that and obviously he walks straight up to this lady and says lady you know what are you doing on the beach and she says no i'm a psychologist and being a psychologist i observe everyone on the beach so very proud of himself, he tells the lady, okay, so how about me? What do you see when you have a look at me? The uh, lady look up and down, she look at this bucket that he's holding in front of his dignity, we just call it that, and she says to him, being a psychologist, I would like to think that you thought, standing in front of me, that that bucket of yours had a base to it <laughs> so okay that's the model of the story that's the basis of the story so now that i've told you the story i'm going to show you two videos of what happened with technology within the last year i'm going to play you that same joke now it's about a four minute joke and you see how we've done this joke not even a year ago and then i'll be back quickly i'll have a chat with you guys and then i'm going to show you how we've done the joke now with the latest ai ai, AI, AI technology Obviously, it's not so easy making a jokes, but telling the story with modern technology and the artificial intelligence technology is growing so quick. Can you just imagine if you look at the two versions of this joke, how it will look like in a year's time and what is capable? It brings the capability up to your creativeness. What will stop you from making excellent content is purely what you can create and what is in your creative mind so i'm bringing you the first video have a look at that video and then afterwards i'll have a quick chat with you thanks guys i'll be back now have a look at this video
Here is a beach blooper joke. So hilarious, you will tell all your friends. All right, gather around folks. It's time for a deep dive into the fascinating world of wrinkly fingers and toes. You know, those prune-like digits you get after a prolonged swim or a luxurious bath? Well, it turns out there's a whole symphony of science behind it, starring our unlikely heroes, osmosis and the sympathetic nervous system. First up, we've got osmosis, the unsung hero of skin hydration. Imagine it as a water park slide for molecules, but instead of kids, it's water molecules sliding through the layers of your skin like they own the place. So, when you're soaking for ages, those keratin cells and sebum decide to throw a pool party and soak up all that water, causing your skin to puff up and wrinkle like a forgotten laundry pile. But wait, there's more. Cue the entrance of the sympathetic nervous system, the control freak of your sweat glands. When your hands and feet start resembling prunes, it's not just because they're having a spa day gone wrong. It's your nerves pulling off a sneaky maneuver. Picture this. Water sneaks into those tiny sweat ducts like uninvited guests crashing a party, and your nerves go into full-on panic mode. Shutting down and boom. Vasoconstriction happens. Translation. Your blood vessels throw on their tightest corset, squeezing your fingers and toes into little wrinkles. So. There you have it, folks. The next time you're chilling in the tub and your fingers start looking like they've aged a century, just remember, it's all thanks to osmosis and your nervous system trying to keep your digits on their toes. Or, should I say, wrinkly. Let's jump to the joke. So, this poor guy at the beach, minding his own business, when suddenly, Mother Nature decides to play a prank on him. The waves turn into mischievous little monsters and snatch his swim trunks away. Now he's stuck in the water, desperately trying to preserve his dignity in front of a beach full of spectators. He's doing the awkward water dance, pretending to be a deep sea explorer, while secretly praying for everyone to magically vanish. Hours pass, and he's still there, turning into a raisin and wondering if he'll ever feel warmth again. Finally, with the setting sun, he sees his chance. There's only one person left on the beach, a woman. He figures it's now or never, but just as he's about to make his daring escape, fate intervenes in the form of a drifting sand bucket. Talk about a well-timed distraction. With the determination of a soldier heading into battle, he makes his move, using a conveniently drifting sand bucket as his shield of modesty. But just as he starts to relax, thinking he's pulled off the greatest escape since Houdini, he decides to strike up a conversation with the woman. Now, here's where it gets juicy. Turns out, she's not just any beach bum. She's a psychologist on a mission, observing the last remaining beach dwellers like a seagull eyeing a long-lost french fry. Our hero, feeling bold, decides to put her skills to the test and asks her to read his mind. With a twinkle in her eye, she looks him up and down then glances at the trusty Sen Bucket and delivers the punchline of the century. I think you thought that the Sen Bucket has a bottom part. <laughs> okay, now that you guys have had a look at that video, that video was made purely by the soft, purely by our, by our video editor and bringing in some type of graphics which you've generated. And it was extremely difficult making a video like this. It's very time taking Today it is still time staking to make an AI video. It's a long process you need to go through obviously. You need to generate uh, your voices which uh, your characters are going to speak. Then you need to go and generate the small little videos which is going to be part of your story. Then you're going to bring all of those into a video editor. Then you're going to put the voices of the, the narrator on which is telling the story and it will flick back then to the persons which actually use their voices. And it depends on the story, obviously. So, yes, in the second version of exactly that same joke, we write our own story. So you can see we've adjusted the story, but the basis of the joke stays exactly the same. So, yes, 
here comes the second version of the story and hang back so that I can have a little chat with you guys just after the story. So yeah, have a look here. Here's the second version of that exact joke. Give it eight months later. And the only thing that have made it able for us to do it in such a way is the advancement of the technology. I'll, have a, I'll be back with you guys now. It's about a four or five minute joke. It's very well told. It's worth having a look at it. Have a look at this joke. See you guys now. In today's funny story joke, we dive into the sun-soaked misadventures of Steve, a guy whose beach day turned into an unforgettable escapade. Picture this, a regular afternoon at the beach, where the biggest worry should be sunburn or a sandcastle mishap. But not for Steve. Oh no, Mother Nature had a different kind of prank up her sleeve, one that involved Steve, a pair of missing swim trunks, and a sand bucket with a twist. Buckle up, because this tale is about to take you on a wave of unexpected twists and chuckles. Once upon a sun-drenched afternoon, our hero, Steve, decided to visit the beach. Steve was a regular guy with a knack for attracting odd situations. That day, the beach was buzzing with life. Kids building sand castles, adults basking in the sun, and teenagers playing volleyball. Steve found a perfect spot, laid out his towel, and headed for the refreshing embrace of the ocean. For the first hour, everything was perfect. The sun was warm, the water was cool, and Steve was floating on his back, letting the waves gently rock him. But just as he was about to head back to shore, the waves had other plans. In a series of mischievous swells, they snatched his swim trunks away. One moment, he was floating blissfully, and the next, he was as bare as a newborn. Steve's initial reaction was a mix of shock and denial. He frantically padded around himself, hoping to find his missing trunks floating nearby. Alas, they were gone, probably halfway to the Caribbean by now. Panic set in. The beach was packed, and Steve was in no mood to put on a show. He decided his best bet was to stay in the water, where at least the waves could offer some modesty. He began his awkward water dance, pretending to be a deep sea explorer, plunging down every few seconds to inspect something underwater. Meanwhile, he prayed that everyone on the beach would either look away or even better, disappear altogether. Hours passed. The sun moved across the sky, transforming Steve into a human prune. The beach gradually emptied, but there was always someone left, lingering like an annoying pop-up ad. Steve wondered if he'd ever feel warmth again, or if he was destined to become a cautionary tale about the dangers of ocean pranks. Finally, the sun began to set, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink. The beach was almost deserted. Almost. Steve noticed there was only one person left. A woman sitting near the water, scribbling in a notebook. It was now or never. Mustering his courage, Steve spotted a drifting sand bucket and grabbed it. He held it strategically, using it as a makeshift shield of modesty. With the determination of a soldier heading into battle, he waded toward shore. His heart pounded as he neared the woman, hoping she wouldn't notice him, or if she did, that she'd be mercifully understanding. Just as Steve started to relax, thinking he'd pulled off the greatest escape since Houdini, he caught the woman's eye. She glanced at him, then at his sand bucket. Steve, emboldened by his near success, decided to strike up a conversation. Hey there. He said trying to sound casual while clutching his sand bucket for dear life. The woman looked up from her notebook, a twinkle in her eye. And what if I may ask, are you writing? I'm a psychologist, she said, observing the last remaining beach dwellers like a seagull eyeing a long lost French fry. Steve chuckled nervously. Well, you've got quite a subject in front of you. Care to read my mind? But this funny story ain't over just yet. 
The psychologist smiled, looking Steve up and down, then glancing pointedly at his trusty sand bucket. I think you thought that sand bucket has a bottom part. If you liked our joke. Okay, now that all of you guys have had a look at first me telling you just the basis of the story and having two versions of the same joke, uh, I would like to say, say to you guys that it is absolutely amazing what uh, technology have done for us in the last year. And it is running madly, it's changing, it is growing, it's improving day to day. Just imagine what you can generate in a year's time. So, there are people that are saying, you will not be able to make your own movie. I can tell you now, if the growth pattern is the same than what it is now, anyone with a creative mind, that obviously learns to work with the software, will be able to generate his own movie in a year from now. So yes, forget about what it means for uh, other industries, but the creativeness is coming into the hands of the, the everyday person. Uh, for anyone that think you're not going to do this just by being creative, that's just not going to work. Uh, for anyone that thinks you just sit back and you press a button and there's an AI content there, that is just not real. It doesn't work. Just got a plane flying over here while I'm standing at the beach. I'll raise my voice a little bit. So yes, a video like you've just seen takes us about two and a half days to generate from telling the story through the whole process through to do a bit of post editing and then putting it on YouTube. Uh, the way we do it, we also translate it into the subtitles in different languages in between playing around with actually doing the voiceovers, dubbing it into other uh, languages. We still haven't seen any effect from it, whether it uh, gains us views, etc. But our subtitles will be translated in different languages for people that watch it in other languages. Uh, at the moment, dubbing is still very expensive. Surely in time it will come better. So thank you very much.